When you're dealing with Platino, you must always remind yourself, this is a titanium module. That means it has to play by titanium's rules, and this is especially pertinent for touches. In other game engines, you can assign touch event listeners to objects directly, handle those touches, and be on your way. In Platino, however, you have to reroute the touches from the game view to the objects listening for the touches. This takes a little getting used to, but actually it isn't too difficult to do. Once you've got the concept down, it flows pretty easily. So what we need to do is we need to add an event listener to the game view that listens for various touch events. Let's do that by heading to the bottom of the code. And just before the event listener for onload, we'll type the following game dot add event listener. And we'll listen for touch start. And we're going to create a function in a minute to handle all of these called handle touches. And we'll copy this line and paste it two more times. So we'll change the next one to touch move and the next one to touch end. And those are the three phases of touch. So now the game view has an event listener that's listening for on load, and that's when the game loads. Then when a touch has started against the view, when it's moved against the view, and when it has ended. And it's using a function called handle touches, which now we'll create. Function handle touches, and we'll pass E as the event object. And now this is where we will reroute the touches uh, to the various objects. And this is also where it gets a little tricky. So we're going to use a method of rerouting the touches that is suggested by Lanica. And this involves the creation of an array that will store objects that are listening for touches. So we'll go to the top of the code and underneath the scene declaration at line eight, touchables equals a blank array. Now we'll head back down to the handle touches function. And here's what we're gonna do. Any object that needs to uh, have a touch or some sort of event listener for a touch, we're going to push it into the touchables array. So we'll create the code so that, let's take a look at the simulator. When we tap the globe, then the text will change. So that means we need to add an event listener to the globe. So where it says world, we're going to type world add event listener. And we'll listen for the touch start event. And we'll eventually have a function that does something. And we will copy and paste this two more times. And let's change touch start to touch move and then touch start to touch end. Now we sort of did this parenthetical statement where we got ahead of ourselves creating this event listener for world. Let's get back to this handle touches function because this is what will route the touches to the world object. So now within handle touches, we'll create a variable called I and set that equal to the length of the touchables array, touchables.length. Then we'll create a blank variable called obj or object, short for object. Notice that there is a comma, okay, and then a semicolon. So I'm declaring multiple variables using the var keyword. So it's really applying to both of them. Now I'm going to loop backwards through the touchables array and forward the touches to those objects within it. I like to do backwards iteration using a while loop. And basically it's while i is true, then do something and just do i minus minus. Every time it runs, it decrements the value of i. And when i equals zero, it's done. So while i minus minus, we'll set the obj variable equal to touchables bracket i, so the current touchable in the array. Then we're going to detect whether or not the touch is within the boundary of the object. And to do that, if obj.contains, and then another set of parentheses, e.x and e.y. So e.x is the x position of the touch, e.y is the y position. So if that touch is within the boundary of the object, then obj.fire 
event, and within the parentheses, the event to fire, which is represented by e.type. So e is the uh, touch event, comma, and we'll create an object with curly brackets, x colon e.x, comma, y colon e.y. So let's review this again, because it's pretty complicated. Within the handle touches event, which is handling all of the touch events against the game view, I'm storing the length of the touchables array. The touchables array stores any object that needs to listen for touches. Here, the world object. I'm creating a blank variable that I use within a uh, control structure here in a moment. And then I'm using a while loop to loop backwards through the touchables array. So i is equal to the length of the array. And then from there, it only gets shorter and shorter. When it equals zero, it's done. Now within this control structure, I set the current object of the array, which is represented by touchables bracket i, to obj. Then I test to see if the touch is within the boundaries of that object. And that's done here with if, and then we use the contains method of the object, and we pass in an x and a y. What that returns is a true or a false. If it's true, then we use the fire event method of that object and we fire whatever the current event type is along with an object that has X and Y properties and we're feeding into that the X position of the touch and the Y position. Before we can go any further, we have yet to actually add the world object to the touchables array. So let's do that now. We'll head to the portion of the code where we added the world object to the scene and underneath touchables dot push world. So now we've added the world object to the array that tracks the objects that need to get touch events. From here, we can work within the add event listeners for the world object. So we'll set the text of the hello object to be equal to start when we've got a touch start event and then move when there's a touch move event and end when the event has ended. Now we will test this in the simulator. And so there you have it. There's the world with the label and when we touch start, we get the start, move, and then end. Now this is just getting us started with Platino in fact, you can probably see there are a few idiosyncrasies that came up that need further explaining, and I'll do that in future lessons.